craft, religion and great art went hand in hand. Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel, Da Vinci's Last Supper or Giotto's Madonna and Child. And contemporary art continues to be inspired by religion if you know where to look. Artworks uncovers a modern day sacred work hidden away in St John's Wood. Lord's Cricket Ground is a mecca for cricket lovers the world over. But it's not the only place of pilgrimage on St John's Wood Road. Behind the portico of this synagogue are many artistic treasures, but one stands out from all the rest. Anish Kapoor is widely acknowledged as one of Britain's finest sculptors. Since winning the Turner Prize in 1991, his work has gone from strength to strength, and he now has a permanent display at the Tate Modern. The synagogue approached me to make a Holocaust memorial. I was given about a year or so, nine months to a year, to, to come up with something. The art scene is buzzing at the moment. A brand new art gallery has opened in East London. There's a spectacular exhibition on the South Bank and Southwark hosts a literary festival. So, let's get a little taster. In Tasters, we check out the Spectacular Bodies exhibition at the Hayward Gallery on London's South Bank. The exhibition features anatomical works of art from all over the world. It's almost become a cliché that acting is the toughest profession to break into. There are already 25,000 actors out there and many are lucky to get even a couple of months work a year. So what's life really like for an aspiring actress? Nightlife found out. Sir Colin Davis is one of the most prestigious conductors in the country and the world's leading interpreter of French composer Berlioz. He is currently rehearsing the Trojans with the London Symphony Orchestra. We caught up with him on location. For the last 12 months, the London Symphony Orchestra has been performing all the major works of Hector Berlioz. It's that time of the programme when we check out the new releases. What would you choose if you only had £50 to spend on going to the theatre, seeing a film, buying a book and CD? This week we put the challenge to broadcaster and writer Robert Elms. I'm looking forward to spending my money. Are you? You're going to be given 50 quid. And you can see a uh, musical or theatre production, you can buy a CD, book, perhaps see a film. But you've got to spend within that £50. First up, this week's selection of books made up of October and November releases. Which one would you go for? Oh, Madonna. Would you? Yeah. Is that because you're biased? Because obviously Damien... Yeah. Yes. Yeah? Is... Yeah. Okay, so you'd go for Madonna. I, I do. Well, I... Yeah, in a lot of ways I'd go for Madonna, actually, because it's always, um, she has this uh, just amazing way of, of, of studying, you know, cutting-edge music. Well, you've got fame. Which one would you go to? Well, it would depend on who asked me out, because I don't think I'd pay for no, any I'd of them. No, I'd give you 50 quid. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to be like a good day yeah. for me to go sit through any of them. <laughs> Famous for its maritime museum and the dome, Greenwich also houses the only museum in the world dedicated to fans. Established by Helen Alexander in 1992, it contains over 2,000 items. Here are the secrets of the Fan Museum. So, Victoria, Richard, how did the idea for Louds and Unhinged come about? Okay, well, just a long story. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's more long story getting out. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, originally, was, we were introduced into the project mm -hmm. by um, Andrew Rosen and Creative Time. They invited us to come and do an installation and to work on the film side. Yeah. So we worked ideas together how we wanted to do it. Yeah, but specifically, they wanted us to deal with fashion and film. film. place manufactured some of the first ever aeroplane parts. It's one of the first ever cinemas. And in the 70s and 80s, it was home to the infamous Cine Club that first screened banned and unavailable films 
like Clockwork Orange. It could only be Scala. There are many hidden secrets in London, but perhaps the most beautiful and, dare I say it, outrageous works of art are on view every day. Yet, unlike this one, they seem to be completely invisible. Well, it's time we took a look up and discovered some of London's most fascinating sculptures. But first, literature. Last week saw a gathering of some of the UK's literary elite at the invitation of the US magazine The New Yorker, which has been the home of America's finest writers and humorists for over 75 years. At the Soho Theatre, the works of a handful of Britain's finest writers were showcased. As London continues to experience a boom as a location for British films, areas like Brixton and Notting Hill have become stars in their own right. The latest postcode to get a movie makeover is EC1, and even gets a film named after it. Shoreditch is a comedy thriller set in the 30s and present day. We joined the cast and crew on set in the heart of Hoxton. <laughs> Welcome back to Artworks. When Kenneth Branagh wrote his autobiography, he was only 28, but he has yet to tread the boards at the National Theatre. Not so our next guest. At only 24, not only has she written her autobiography, but she has landed the lead role in My Fair Lady at the National Theatre. Eat your heart out, Kenneth. It's that time of the week where we find out what's happening in the London arts world. It's time for a little taster. Each week in Tasters, we take a look at the cutting edge of the capital's art scenes. This week, we start off with a long walk down to the Barbican Gallery. It's the first major exhibition in Britain of rock and pop culture, including Elvis's leather outfit and the original Beatles suits. Well, you know we're going to give you £50. Your challenge yes. is to see a theatre production, buy a CD, perhaps a book, and see a film. Yep. Very good. 50 pounds. I'm on. Yeah. Okay. 25 pounds, and that's a good price for you. 25 pounds. It's 25 pounds, but I think you can probably get it a little cheaper if you. Well, you're not with me, darling. You get it for 25. Not with me. You get it for not with you, darling. I'm into science fiction. Are you? you know. I noticed in your in your back room there that yeah. you had all the Star Trek videos. Yeah. Are you a Trekkie? I'm a serious Trekkie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is yeah. A Seven of nine is <laughs> is. <laughs> It's seven of nine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Robert. He's going to be blown on Peter Aquin. Yeah. But, A, I think he's London's finest living writer. And the other night he came up and gave me a kiss in a restaurant. So I've got, because I'd interviewed him the day Saucy. before. <laughs> and he gave me a peck on the cheek, which I was very pleased <laughs> by. Next up, Robert has to pick a CD, with each one priced at 30 99 It's going to be tough. Yeah, it's just, Three there's pounds. It's enough, Three mon pounds enough money for a large tub of hagen I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> Three pounds, two pence left. Yeah. Forty-six pounds ninety-eight. Fantastic, Michael Attenborough. You've done it. Fifty-six forty-nine. Oh, Fifty-six pounds forty-nine. Well, if I give Ian. you six pounds forty-nine, because that will that count? Won't it? I mean, 50, six, six pounds, pounds forty-nine. pounds forty-nine pence. I think that's Ian, a fair you know what? round. You have broken a record. You are the first person to go over budget. To go over budget. Yes, you are. So. And I, you know what you're going to have to do? For what am I going to have to do for that? You're going to have to buy me a big drink. I'll do that. Okay. I know them here. Twist my arm. 